Hello everyone and welcome to another Lens Studio tutorial. In this video we are going to be learning how to cycle through different post effects by tapping on the screen. The first thing we're going to need to do is add some post effects to our scene. Okay, let's add some frost here, oh, heat, and then frost, and maybe some old paper. And uh, let's go with Spectrum. Okay, so now we have all of these post effects on at once, but we only want one to be on at a time. So let's add a script here and start coding out our logic. So in the script, we're going to need to input an array of scene objects. And to do that, we're going to type backslash backslash at input scene object with the S and the O capitalized. And then to create the array, we're going to do the opening and closing square brackets. And then we're going to name it, we're just going to call it obj. And we're going to hit apply. And let's add that script to our scene by creating an empty scene object and dragging the script into the inspector. And now we'll see it's asking us for these objects to create the array. So let's add the post effects here. Okay, so now we have our post effect added and we can reference them in our script. So we're first going to create the default state where the first post effect is enabled and all the other ones are disabled. And this is going to happen when the script is initialized or when the user opens the lens. So let's first do script.obj and then in the square brackets we're going to type 0 because that is the first index in the array. If you look here we'll see the first one is at value 0, the second one's at value 1, and so on. So this first script object in the array, dot enabled, is going to be true. And then we're going to need to set the, all the rest of the ones in the array to false. So to do that, we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to type for var i equals 1, because we're starting at the second index in the array. We already have this first one specified. So then i is less than script.obj.length. This is basically saying once it gets to the end of that array, it's going to stop. And then every time it's going to go up by one. So i plus plus. Okay, so then we're going to create the curly brackets. And inside there, we're going to do script.obj. And then in the index, we're going to type i because it's going to be using this number. So then we're going to dot enabled equals false. So now it's going to set all the other ones to false and it's going to set the first one to true. There we go. So the first one's enabled, all the other ones are disabled. Now we need to create our tap event to cycle through these post effects. So let's go to lensstudio.com and let's search tap event. And then scroll down here, copy that code snippet, and then we'll paste it in our script. So now Every time we tap, we can do something inside here. So first, let's create a count variable to keep track of where we are in the array. So variable count equals zero at start. And then every time we tap, the count is going to go up by one, just like we did with the i variable. Now we're going to create another for loop to go through everything in the array. So variable i equals zero, i is less than script.obj.length. And i plus plus. Now we're going to check if the count equals i, that means we're going to enable that post effect and then disable everything else. So if count equals i, then script.obj at the index of i is enabled. Oops, true. There we go. And then we're going to do else, so basically every other object is going to be disabled. So dot enabled equals false. Okay, so now we have the ability to go through every object in the array. But once we get to the end of the array, it's going to keep on going up and we're not going to be able to loop back. So we need to create an if statement inside this tap event but outside the for loop to basically check where the count is. So if the count is equal to script dot obj dot length basically if it's at the end of the array we're gonna set the count back to zero so 
so count equals zero. And then we're also going to want to basically recreate this starting position so this one's enabled. So now once we tap, we're going to go through all of these, but once we reach the end and tap it again, it's going to go right back to the first one. So now we have an infinite loop here. We can just keep on cycling through. Perfect. But let's say you wanted to add a sprite image to the first object and a common use of that would be like if somebody wanted to add like their snap code and like add the creator type thing so that when you open the lens that first one will show up but once we tap through it all it won't show up again and it'll just kind of skip that and the way we do that is instead of setting the count back to zero and enabling the first one we're gonna set the count to one and then enable the second one instead so that way it'll never go back to that first image so we have this first one as heat so once we cycle through and get to the end it's gonna go right to the second one instead and skip the first one so let's say at the very end we don't want any post effects to show up maybe you want the user to compare the post effects to having nothing at all and really all you need to do is is just create an example post effect, add it to the end of the array, and then just set the alpha to zero so that there's nothing there. And that'll kind of give you the illusion that there's nothing on the camera. So now if we cycle through to the end, the last one has nothing in it. And then it'll also go right back to the second one. Okay, so now we learned how to cycle through different post effects and also a little bit more custom features like adding a image to the first one or also having nothing in the last one. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment and I would love to help. Also, I would love to see your creations, so post your snap codes or the link to your lens and I would love to check them out. Otherwise, you guys have a good night.